All right, so this is the part where we start putting it back together. Um, one of the things that I mentioned in the uh, prior video was that I had created a new circuit board for the CPU card. Um, but I should point out that the, the actual board I showed you in that video is different from the board that I'm going to use here because I made some quote-unquote improvements as I went along. Um, I'm not that great an expert at producing printed circuit boards and for some other projects I'm working on here. Uh, when I got around to doing things like putting on surface mounted uh, 5 volt regulators, um, I discovered I needed better ground plane and heat sinking capability. So I went through uh, an iteration on this board and as you can see from the the dark area here is a lack of copper um, to the new board. Um, there's quite a bit more copper, and what I did there was was stuck a bunch of vias in various areas that connected the ground plane on the back um, to the front and eliminated the gaps that you saw before. So we have a, a much more um, improved ground plane board, which then turned out to look like this in the, uh, the final iteration with all the passive components and everything put on the board. Um, and you'll notice I've got some passive stuck in there under the teensy. The teensy that fits on this board from PGRC has pads on the bottom um, that expose part of its circuits. Two of the pads that I needed were the reset pad and the A13 analog output pad. And the way I've developed this is to build the, the card so that the teensy can plug into it. Uh, in the, the way it usually does. And then I put, um, just on the board here, some pins to pick up reset and A13 and route them to appropriate places on the board. And, and that works out fine for my purposes. So with that, uh, we've got the new card. It's ready to go. Um, here's the bottom of the chassis. I've already gone ahead and put in the audio amplifier because it seemed easier. I hooked it up to the speaker, and I've got the uh, radio hooked to its uh, antenna cable and ready to go in. So now let me uh, continue at a fast-forward pace to uh, make the rest of these pieces fit in. Okay, we've now got pretty much everything installed in the bottom of the circuit card. You'll notice I left the 10 pin things last. They seem to be things that most get in the way of other things, so let's uh, try and get them in now.
Okay, we've got everything hooked up. Battery monitor, I've disconnected the battery source from the CPU at the moment until I can test. Yep, it looks like we've got the battery babysitter hooked up properly, the blue light's on. If we throw the switch, we'll begin to charge the battery. Um, and when it um, goes out, the battery will be fully charged. But at the moment, I think we're in good shape. We can keep moving ahead and attach the pieces from the case, the upper part of the case. So let's give ourselves a little room here and bring everything together. Okay, we've got all the wiring in. Everything seems to be square, and uh, I've got it plugged into the USB connection, so we're charging the battery at the moment. Um, the only thing left to do here is uh, run it through some self-tests to make sure that things are working. Um, let's go ahead and try that. I'll put this side back over here, move it around so you can see it a little bit better and then maybe zoom in so we can see what's going on in the, the screen. Okay, it goes through a startup sequence, finds a bunch of the parts, checks the battery, shows it's good, and then sets up here to run a diagnostic subsystem. Okay, audio is working. Now we see if the joystick is working. Yep. Radio parameters all come back. Yep. Keypad, one, two, three, one, five, six. Yep, they're all working. Well, the GPS is reading back stuff. It hasn't found a satellite, so the uh, stuff is junk. And the battery says it's 90% charged. Um, and all the self-tests are done. Okay, everything's working. Now the last test we'll have to do is put everything back together here and uh, see if the radio, in fact, can talk to the uh, test box for the robot. We should be done. Okay, we've buttoned the box up here and uh, we've got the robot test rig running over in the corner of the room. We may be able to hear its audio, uh, but let's start it up here and see what's happening. Battery looks good. We're now trying to establish a radio link. Um, we have it. 123 millisecond cycle time. Message is going back and forth. And here we go. The controller is up and running. And uh, it's got some data from the robot says it's currently stopped. It's got a heading of 360 degrees, 16 degrees northwest. It's not going anywhere. Um, if we send the joystick forward a couple of notches, we should see the speed index here pick up. When it updates, yep, we're up to speed two. Um, if we go backward, we should get down to zero, and now we're going backward, and you can hear the robots backup noise maker and we'll stop it um, so we declare this a success radio link is working fine all the circuitry is working fine the cables and everything got made properly um, and we're good to go
All right, that's the end of our little rebuild the controller video session. I hope you enjoyed it.